Kevin Spacey was once the most sought-after actor in Hollywood, as he's a winner of numerous accolades and known to be a wide range of characters portraying insanity, psychopathy, and more. All seemed to be good, and his reputation was intact until it all turned sour in 2017, with sexual misconduct, accusations, and allegations coming out that changed the trajectory of the 68-year-old's career. Known to play villains and despicable characters, whilst leading a very secretive and personal life, it felt only poetic that Spacey had a lot in his cupboard. The puzzle seemed to piece together why Spacey could accurately depict criminals and terrifying humans on screen. 2017 proved to be a dramatic year for Hollywood, as shortly after Weinstein's heinous acts became public, the floodgates opened and Kevin Spacey followed soon after. A lot of sexual misconduct allegations were made against Spacey in 2017. But it all started when Antoni Rapp, an actor, accused Spacey of molesting him 30 years ago, when he was merely 14 in Spacey's apartment in 1986. This proved to be damaging to Spacey's reputation, and many of his deals began to sour. Spacey took to social media to address the issue, which only furthered the backlash and outrage he received. Spacey said he had no memory of the account and was horrified to hear of such allegations. He went on denying it, but not convincingly, as he said, but if I did behave then as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior. And I'm sorry for the feelings he describes having carried with him all these years. Spacey also used this avenue with his public denial and apology to come out to the public as gay, which was already suspected as he often felt that he kept it close to his chest while embarrassed or in fear of his sexuality. Spacey was slammed by everyone for his tweet and most significantly by the homosexual community who believed Spacey was in some way seeking condolences in his coming out while being accused of being a predator. The association of homosexuality with child abuse encouraged the media to see him as guilty of the crime he was charged with. More other accusations came forward as they were motivated by the new surge of sexual misconduct allegations flying around in the country at the time. 15 more people made accusations against Spacey. The Mexican actor Roberto Cavazos also came out with an accusation against Spacey as did others like Tony Montana, a filmmaker, and Richard Dreyfuss's Don Harry. Spacey was looking likely to face a good amount of jail time, possibly life imprisonment. The popular show House of Cards featured Spacey suspended filming, and some employees even came to accuse Spacey of sexual assault and harassment, saying they often felt uncomfortable working with him on set. Eight anonymous co-workers came out with their claims against Spacey, the accusers remained anonymous as they feared retaliation from the Hollywood star. Many of the accusers on set labeled Spacey as a predator, as they said they often noticed it with his younger assistants he often carried around. One of the anonymous co-workers told CNN about his assault when Spacey put his hand down his pants while they were driving to a scene of the production of their show in the early season. He was eventually removed from the cast as the show was preparing to shoot its final season. He was also released as executive producer of the show. Spacey also had a movie with Netflix about Gore Vidal's life. But with the backlash and situation at hand, Netflix scrapped the entire production. Spacey had also just finished shooting All the Money in the World with director Ridley Scott, where Spacey played J. Paul Getty. Spacey's scenes were scratched and Christopher Plummer was hired to replace him and reshot every scene Spacey was in. The company spent $10 million to take Spacey out of the film. Christopher Plummer earned an Oscar nomination for the role. Spacey was said to receive positive reviews from early screenings, suggesting he might be nominated for an Oscar, which would have seen him have his first nomination since 2000, but that was not to be. Spacey's associations began to dwindle, some awards and honors were revoked. His publicists and agency dropped him. Spacey only fueled his backlash and controversy as he released a video titled, Let Me Be Frank, using the voice of his character, Frank Underwood, in the House of Cards show. 
denouncing the allegations and criticizing those against him. Spacey posted several more videos over the years, still portraying his House of Cards character and addressing the issues of his case and societal issues. Spacey's sexual misconduct could be traced to early in his days, before he even had the power and reputation to exploit people. In 1981, in one of Spacey's early roles in a play, titled Henry IV, Part I, Andy Holtzman, who was also working on the production of the play, was making a call when suddenly he was attacked by Spacey, who was aggressive and had his hands all over Holtzman. Holtzman was eventually able to struggle free of Spacey's assault and screamed at him. Spacey showed no remorse for his actions, but appeared angry and dissatisfied. He grabbed his things and stormed out of the theater. Holtzman said he was gay and proud of his sexuality, but that didn't justify what Spacey did to him and even left him traumatized. Holtzman also stated that Spacey's attitude towards the incident annoyed him more than anything, as Spacey reacted angrily after being pushed off. A man named John told the BBC that back in 1984, when he was 17, Spacey tried to seduce him, as he suggested they both share a bed for the night in his apartment. But John refused and slept on the sofa. To John's surprise, he woke up with Spacey's arm around him. John felt very uncomfortable and left the apartment immediately after he woke up. Roberto Cavazos took to Facebook to accuse Spacey of sexual assault, saying during Spacey's years as the artistic director of the old Vic, he often fondled him against his will. Cavazos also said that many of his colleagues during this time in the old Vic had similar stories to share. While working in London still as the artistic director of the old Vic, Spacey assaulted a bartender who worked in a famous bar close to the old Vic. Spacey invited the bartender, Chris Nixon, who was 20 years old at the time, to a party at his apartment. Getting there, Nixon was assaulted by Spacey as Spacey aggressively grabbed his crotch. Nixon said he was aware Spacey was a bit drunk, but it was no excuse for his actions. Uncomfortable, Nixon immediately left Spacey's apartment to prevent the situation from escalating. The Sun and the Daily Mail published a piece where a man named Daniel Beale told the news tabloids that when he was 19 and working as a bartender in a Sussex hotel while on a cigarette break, Spacey exposed himself to him against his will and offered him an expensive watch to buy his silence. He clearly expressed his displeasure with the incident. BuzzFeed reported that Mark Ebenhock, who worked on the set of the movie Outbreak, which Spacey starred in, was approached by one of Spacey's harem young assistants in place of Spacey to solicit him for sex. Mark stated that being in the closet as a gay man whilst working for the military back in 1995 would be damaging to his reputation if he were known to be gay. And therefore, he was disgusted by the attempt and firmly declined. The Hollywood director Tony Montana came forward with his story that happened in 2003, where he described an incident where Spacey confronted him and groped his genitals. He was then chased around by Spacey and he eventually ended up in the bathroom. Montana said he was terrified by the whole situation and had never felt more harassed in his life. Harry Dreyfus, the son of the Jaws movie star Richard Dreyfus, also came forth with accusations against Spacey on November 4, 2017. Harry described the incident where Spacey groped his genitals when he was just 18, while his father was present in the room. While they rehearsed lines for a play Spacey was directing in the old Vic. Harry said his father didn't see the incident, despite being in the room with them, and that he only told his father many years later. It was a traumatizing incident. Initially, Harry often told jokes about it at parties and to his friends. Still, he recently realized he was processing his trauma wrongly, and there was nothing funny about the incident. Spacey and his lawyers firmly denied Dreyfus's accusations. Also in the BuzzFeed article with accusations against Spacey was one of a man named Justin Dawes, who told BuzzFeed that when he was a minor and a theater usher, Spacey, appearing in a play in the theater, invited him and a friend to his apartment to watch movies. Getting to the apartment, things turned out to be entirely different than what they were led to believe. Spacey started by giving the boys cocktails to get them intoxicated. Then, shortly, 
he began playing pornography on the TV. Dawes told BuzzFeed that he felt he was trying to be intimidated, but he wasn't. And he and his friend were able to prevent the situation from getting worse. One of the serious accusations that would prove challenging in court was the accusation from former Boston TV news anchor, Heather Unruh's son. Spacey was accused of groping the genitals of the then 18-year-old son in 2016. Heather Unruh said her son filed a report immediately, but police didn't take matters seriously. Several accusers preferred to keep themselves anonymous as they reported these cases as well. One unnamed British journalist told BuzzFeed when he interviewed the actor for a magazine back in the early 2000s. They went to a club afterwards and Spacey often grabbed his genitals and blocked him severally from leaving the club. The journalist said he couldn't write about it as it would be outing Spacey as gay, who was then closeted. Another anonymous accuser, who was 14 at the time he was assaulted, claimed he had a sexual relationship with Spacey for over a year. It ended when the actor once tried to rape him. The anonymous accuser went on to describe Spacey as a pedophile. A bartender reported an assault to the London police after Spacey sexually assaulted him after he went to Spacey's apartment seeking career advice. He then passed out at Spacey's apartment where the actor then assaulted him. Soon enough, Spacey began facing legal action. Spacey had four legal cases against him to face in court. Case one was an accusation by a masseur whom Spacey attacked at his home. The second case saw Spacey charged with felony and sexual assault in Massachusetts for allegedly groping an 18-year-old busboy who filed a lawsuit seeking damages. The third case came from the Star Trek actor, Anthony Rapp, who filed a whopping $40 million lawsuit, claiming sexual assault when he was a minor. The final case was the worst, as the British authorities charged Spacey with a sexual assault case that involved four men and 12 separate charges. The assault spanned from March 2005 to April 2013 in London and Gloucestershire. The first case ended abruptly for Spacey, as the anonymous massage therapist died all of a sudden. Case two was about Heather Unruh's son. The former Boston TV news anchor took to the press an emotional interview where she talked about the incident, telling the media Spacey had forced drinks on her son and then groped him repeatedly. Her son testified that he told Spacey he was 23 while being 18 as they drank at a bar. Spacey then proceeded to unzip his pants and rub his genitals. The testimony also included him saying, that she had proof as he sent a Snapchat video of the grabbing to his girlfriend. The accuser constantly kept his girlfriend informed with texts as everything was unfolding. When he realized Spacey's intention, he began texting frantically. He texted his girlfriend, he invited me to his house and he's buying me drinks. He's been buying me so many drinks, help me. He has gotten me so many. Another text entailed, he pulled my zipper down and he has grabbed my dick like eight times. And finally, I got the autographs and a hell of a story. Spacey's lawyers argued that the text implied he was more amused and excited by the situation rather than upset as he was enjoying everything that happened and had a change of opinion now to bring the actor's reputation down and probably get a settlement. The lawyers I also noticed missing texts and videos during the conversation with the accuser's girlfriend. The prosecutors were displeased with the missing information and believed it would only help Spacey's team and their narratives. The accuser's mom eventually admitted to deleting some things from the phone before turning it over to the police and the lawyers. The court then decided they wanted to see the phone, but the accuser's family claimed they had no idea where the phone was, even after the police confirmed they had returned it. Later, Spacey invited him over to his apartment for a party. Rapp said at one point, he was exhausted and bored of the adult things that went on at the party and then went into Spacey's bedroom where he saw a television and turned it on to keep himself occupied. Later, when the party had ended and the guests had gone, Spacey came into the bedroom and blocked the doorway. He swooped the young rap up in his arms and laid him on the bed and Spacey then sat on top of the 14-year-old. Before he was groped or kissed, Rap wriggled free of Spacey. When the accuser was questioned about the phone, he invoked the Fifth Amendment 
right against self-incrimination, refusing to answer any questions regarding the phone. The prosecutors had no angle to go within the court case, as their witness invoked the Fifth Amendment, unless they decided to indict him and force him to testify regardless. Some days before the case was dropped, the accuser filed a civil lawsuit against Spacey in want of money, as he believed he might not prevail with criminal charges against Spacey. Eventually, the civil lawsuit was also dropped and the accuser excused it for his being overwhelmed with emotions and not thinking clearly. But many believed this to be a lie and matters were settled privately with Spacey. He was settled financially, but just away from the public gaze. It's illegal to pay someone money not to testify, but the civil lawsuit is all about money. So why not settle it privately? A lot of misshaping made the case fall apart. The missing texts could have implied that the accuser was indeed interested in the sexual affair and there was no assault or anything non-consensual. So the accuser and the lawyers dropped the case and Spacey got off altogether. Spacey's next case was massive as it involved a minor. Case three, which involved Anthony Rapp when he was a minor, brought a massive blow to Spacey's career and reputation. This was the first accusation to break out as Adam Vary wrote an article for BuzzFeed about Anthony Rapp's sexual assault at the hands of Kevin Spacey, who was 14. Rapp's story was detailed, which he said happened as Spacey took him and another actor friend out clubbing and to dinner. Some days, and he left the apartment. Rapp said he suffers tremendously from the incident and has PTSD. This case caught the eye of many and became a federal case as a trial took place in New York. The story began to be dissected from head to toe. It was discovered that the location Rapp mentioned needed to be more accurate as Spacey's apartment had a studio apartment with no delegate bedroom, which Rapp claimed was there. Similarities to the Broadway play Precious Sons were found in the story where the young Rapp rehearsed a scene several times with Ed Harris. The scene involved Ed Harris swooping the young Rapp off his feet and into his arms, and then Rapp was laid on the bed. This revelation raised a lot of eyebrows in Rapp's story. Rapp told the writer Vary that he once had PTSD when he saw Spacey at the 2008 Tony Awards, but it was discerned that it couldn't be confirmed that Spacey was even there. Other things were discovered, as it was found, that the article writer, Adam Vary, had been friends with Rapp for almost 20 years. A subpoena text message revealed that the Anthony Rapp story wasn't reported to Vary. Still, they both agreed to work on the article and write the story together, developing a solid story that could be believable. Vary convinced Rapp to be methodical about their story and create plausible stories that could be had for Spacey to deny. One of the texts showed Vary telling Rapp, we don't want to nail down a specific date that Spacey could then flatly deny. We're still looking, but if we can't nail it down, we'll say you saw him at an industry event. The U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan, in the case, concluded that Vary's willingness to shape the story, according to Rapp's motive, proved telling to the intention at hand and clouded every statement from the accuser to be received with doubt. The case didn't last long, and the jury acquitted Spacey of the charges in an hour. The details of the fourth case were kept at a minimum as the media reported little on it. The fourth case of the London charge included three men accusing Spacey of crotch grabbing and one accused him of unwanted oral sex whilst he was sleeping. Spacey was eventually acquitted of all the charges and it was said that most of the stories were unbelievable and ridiculous so that they couldn't fool the court. Spacey was free from all his legal troubles but how we got away from some cases raised a few eyebrows. Three of his accusers died before their cases ever went to court. One of the accusers died of cancer. Another died of suicide as he struggled with alcoholism and depression. He took his own life on Christmas Day in 2019. Another dead was Linda Culkin, who was obsessed with Spacey. She stalked Spacey and constantly threatened him. She once made a bomb threat that had the police clear an entire building. She eventually served prison time for her constant threats. Culkin eventually died in a car accident. Spacey finally became free of any charges. Kevin Spacey was born to parents. 
Kathleen Ann, a secretary, and Thomas Jeffrey Fowler, a data consultant. Spacey shared a very difficult childhood with his sister and elder brother, the latter who once came out to describe their father as a racist and a sexual and physical abuser. Spacey, who once described his father as a normal man, confirmed these words after he came out as a gay to the public. Spacey stated his father to be a neo-Nazi and abusive, which made him secretive that he kept his personal life to himself as far as suppressing his sexuality. Spacey, passionately interested in comedy, tried to succeed as a comedian before eventually migrating to a drama school where he learned to perform on stage. Still passionate about comedy, he often showcased his skills in talent competitions and performed stand-up comedy. Spacey first began his professional career on the stage in Broadway as he began with smaller roles acting as extras. A year into his stage career, he worked with the widely recognized Liv Ullman and John Neville in a production of Henrik Elbsen Ghosts that opened at the Eisenhower Theater. Spacey went on to work with many more great artists and directors in stage play, building up his reputation, playing a vast number of difficult and critically acclaimed roles. In 1986, his prominence began when he starred alongside Jack Lemmon, Peter Gallagher, and Bethel Leslie in Jonathan Miller's production of Eugene O'Neill, Long Day's Journey into Night. After working with Jack Lemmon, the two became close, and Jack Lemmon began mentoring Spacey. In 1986, Spacey also made his first film appearance that would prove a start of many more to come. He starred in the movie Heartburn, alongside the legendary Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson. Two years later, he was cast in another film by the same director of his previous work, here Spacey had more screen time. Spacey became exceptionally busy as he also made a break in TV as well, working with his mentor Lemon in an earlier role in the miniseries, The Murder of Mary Fagan. 1987 saw Spacey star in his first major TV deal as he played a senator in the second season of Crime Story. Before the year ran out, he also featured in The Equalizer, a spy thriller series that saw Spacey play the role of Detergent Sergeant Cole. Spacey was never shy about taking on challenging roles and questionable characters, and this saw him play the role of a depressive arm dealer in the television series Wise Guy. The following year, Spacey starred in a comedy film, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, alongside the famous Gene Wilder. While enjoying his breakthrough on screen, Spacey actively remained in theater. 1991 saw him win the prestigious Tony Award for his portrayal of Uncle Louie in the Broadway hit titled Lost in Yonkers, showcasing his talent and potential on screen in his early roles. Spacey drew attention from the big studios and directors and began getting lid roles in big films. In 1992, he was cast alongside an ensemble of Al Pacino, Alec Baldwin, Alan Arkin, and many more. Spacey played a malevolent office manager in the movie. In 1994, he played a news reporter named Harry Kingsley based on a 1917 dog sledge race titled Iron Will. Spacey became very busy in Hollywood, getting multiple roles and offers into his early years in the game. Spacey's career would reach new heights with his widely known and acclaimed role as an enigmatic criminal in Brian Singer's neo-noir film, The Usual Suspects. Spacey's character made the film as classic as his role still often brings up conversations about the movie. In the film, Spacey starred alongside Benicio Del Toro, Gabriel Byrne, and Stephen Baldwin. Not only did his performance sit well with the audience, but it also saw Spacey earn his first nominations for the Golden Globe Award, Screen Actors Guild Award, and Academy Award. He went on to win the Oscar for Best Actor, in a supporting role. The same year, in 1995, Spacey worked with David Fincher in his detective thriller Seven, starring Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman as detectives. Spacey played a venomous and meticulous serial killer who acted upon the seven deadly sins. 1995 skyrocketed Spacey's career in Hollywood, making him an A-lister amongst the best. Spacey kept on taking more roles as he starred in a Time to Kill the following year, and made his directorial debut with the film Albino Alligator. His directorial debut was not met with a familiar reception of success 
as his acting roles were, and the film performed poorly at the box office, grossing $300K on a budget of $6 million. Despite its bomb at the box office, critics lauded Spacey's effort and direction of the film. The following year, Spacey was among a great ensemble consisting of Russell Crowe, Guy Pearce, Danny DeVito, and Kim Basinger in the movie L.A. Confidential. The film succeeded, and critics singled out Spacey to be its star. His role earned him his first nomination at the BAFTA Awards for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Spacey is renowned for his versatility, and he displayed his remarkable range as he voiced an animated character in the Pixar movie A Bug's Bug's Life. 1999 proved to be a lot for the Hollywood star, as several reports questioned why the star wasn't in a relationship. Many reports stated that his absence of a partner meant he was gay. Spacey ridiculed the claims, saying he didn't care what anyone thought and preferred to keep his personal life private. Later that year, Spacey acted alongside Annette Bening in Sam Mendes' Mendes' movie, American Beauty. Spacey played a depressed husband and father who became attracted to his daughter's daughter's friend. The movie and Spacey's Spacey's performance received a lot of praise from the audience and the critics. Spacey won his second Oscar, this time for Best Actor in a Leading Role. The movie also took home the praise for Best Picture. Rumored to be dating a scriptwriter, Diane Dreyer, Spacey confirmed the rumors as he brought her to the Oscars and included her in his acceptance speech, telling the world how much he loved her. In his speech, Spacey praised and dedicated his award to his longtime friend, Jack Lemmon, calling him his mentor and father figure. He also pointed out the actor's performance in the film, The Apartment, as some of the finest actors in the world have ever seen. Spacey also won the Best Actor Award at the BAFTA Awards and Screen Actors Guild Awards. Nearly two decades into his Hollywood career, Spacey was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Already an established actor in Hollywood, Spacey kept the steam running with more roles. 2000 saw him play a disturbed grade school teacher. Some years later, he starred in a biopic titled Beyond the Sea, where he portrayed the musician Bobby Darin. Beyond the Sea was a passionate project for Spacey as he was a fan of the singer during his childhood. Spacey initially struggled with funding the film as no studio in the U.S. seemed ready to back the project. Spacey went overseas to Europe, getting funding from the U.K. and Germany to fund his dream film. Spacey co-wrote the script and co-produced and directed the movie while starring as the lead. The talented Hollywood star displayed versatility as he flexed his vocal cords portraying the singer. His singing was praised and came as a surprise to many. Although the reviews of the films were divisive as many thought his depiction of the singer to be flawed, most criticism came from the perspective that Spacey was too old to portray the young Bobby Darren. Widely recognized for his talent and passion for art and theater, 2003, it was announced that Spacey would become the artistic director of the Old Vic, one of London's oldest theaters. Spacey spent 10 years working as the artistic director and claimed he had the best time of his life creating works much bigger than himself. After he served at the Old Vic, he was awarded an honorary knighthood for his service to the theater at the Queen's Birthday Honors. In 2006, Spacey played the popular comic book character Lex Luthor in Brian Singer, adapted from the superhero Superman in the movie Superman Returns. Spacey had a deal to return for the sequel, but the series was eventually abandoned. Still very active in television, Spacey began his long partnership with HBO as he starred in an HBO original drama film titled Recount. The film was based on a real story that happened in 2000 when the United States presidential election votes in Florida had to be recounted. The film had other big name stars like Laura Dern, John Hurt, and Tom Wilkinson. The film got a lot of recognition from the Emmy Awards, and Spacey earned a nomination for his role in the movie. Continuing to play a vast array of characters, Spacey starred in the movie 21, based on a bestseller about an MIT student who used mathematical probability to aid himself in the game Blackjack. 
2010 saw Spacey become the first day Hollywood actor to star in a film fully funded by the Chinese. The movie was a black comedy film titled Inseparable. In 2011, Spacey was cast as the character Frank Underwood in what could be his most famous role in the Netflix epic House of Cards. This brought various award nominations to the star, which saw him win a Golden Globe. He eventually got cut off from the show after the fifth season as his sexual misconduct came to light. Some years later, Spacey starred in the famous box office success, Horrible Bosses, a film about three men having horrible bosses, with Spacey being the primary antagonist. Still heavily involved in all aspects of filmmaking and not just being behind the camera, Spacey co-produced the critically acclaimed film Captain Phillips, which was eventually nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. A few years later, Spacey played President Richard Nixon in the movie Elvis and Nixon, depicting real-life events where the singer requested to be sworn in as an undercover agent. He went on to star in a complicated role, playing a man trapped in the body of a cat titled Nine Lives. 2016 saw an ample opportunity on the horizon for Spacey, as he was to be appointed chairman of Relativity Studios, which has gained new acquisitions and expanded its studio. Spacey was excited at this unique opportunity to oversee the creation of quality entertainment. But eventually, Spacey opted out of the position. Spacey is known for his excellent impressions and has imitated several of his colleagues and other celebrities. He once admitted to impersonating Johnny Carson's son for free theater tickets. Heavenly was involved in his profession, and Spacey was actively engaged in politics as a Democrat. Spacey is known to be a great friend of the former president, Bill Clinton. Spacey has actively fought for causes he stands by. He was spreading awareness of HIV AIDS across the globe and speaking out against political injustice and unfairness. Passionate about art, Spacey started a foundation in the United Kingdom to develop more interest in art, especially theater, among the youth. Kevin Spacey seems to have come upon a crossword in his life and career. Spacey lives freely now and has suffered no legal actions, but he has been shunned away from the industry he loves and struggles to work as his image and reputation have been damaged by his several accusations. Spacey hopes to redeem his reputation and make a comeback to the career he so passionately loves. It would be a feat to achieve, but it can't be said to be impossible. As many before him have had tarnished reputations restored, please share your thoughts on his life and career in the comment section below.